Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Allah bless you all. Uh, let's start Al-Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده وترضيه وجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين وآله وسلم اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا So Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen We looked at the beautiful description of the temporary nature of this life last time And those we looked at the reward of those who take this life for what it is It's a means to draw closer to Allah الدنيا مزرعة الآخرة The dunya is the, the place where you sow your crops for the akhirah and then, so they did great, so they get the greatest of reward, the most beautiful place, paradise, and an increase, which is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. So now we see the opposite of that. Because things become clear through knowing the opposites. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَالَّذِينَ كَسَبُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ جَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ uh, As for those who commit evil, the reward of an evil deed is its equivalent. Humiliation will cover them, smother them, right? Uh, with malahum min Allahi min asim, with no one to protect them from Allah. كأنما أغشيت وجوههم قطعا من الليل مظلما. It's as if their faces were covered with patches of the night's deep darkness. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ The very opposite of the previous group. <clears throat> so, he says, وَالَّذِينَ كَسَبُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ As for those who went out of their way to deliberately do horrible actions, سَيِّئَ Something سَيِّئَ It's vile, it's disgusting, it's, you look at it and you think, Ugh. And as Abu Su'ud said, which we talked about a couple of sessions before, that things are hidden in this life. The reality of things is hidden. So something that's beautiful here, such as, for example, iman or gratitude, you know, you see its real worth in the akhirah. And such as, you know, and then there's other things that people enjoy. For, exa for example, zina. They fulfill their physical, you know, their carnal urges in a haram way. And it seems fun. And it seems like, oh, we're doing it wrong, you know, and we're doing it and it's wrong and it's so much fun or whatever they, you know, they seem to enjoy with that. When they turn up on the Day of Judgment and they see the reality of it, it's not going to be fun. It's just going to be horrendous. And that's where, you know, we saw some inclination of this in some of the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some indication of this, that uh, when he went uh, to the Mi'raj and he was shown the hellfire, there were people there with fresh meat in front of them, you know, fresh and cooked and everything. And then there was raw, disgusting, putrid meat that, you know, that was rotten. And they were eating the... Rotten meat, and they were leaving the fresh meat. So people who had a, you know, a halal outlet for their physical urges through marriage and whatever their spouses, but they were going and doing haram. So this is a problem. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will create the reality of matters. So He says those who deliberately go out and do this. No, note that it's people who know what's wrong, know it's haram, and then they go chasing after it. The, he says for jaza usayyatin bimithliha. Then the true and appro appropriate and apportionate re recompense for something vile is its, its equivalent. They did something vile and they will make its equivalent punishment in the Akhirah. And Kufr, for example, absolute disbelief, rejection of God, despite the insult and everything that he entails to God. Someone who disbelieves doesn't have a timer. Yeah, he'll, I'll stay, you know, he'll stay like this for 40 years and then he'll believe. No, they want to live that way forever. So that's what their punishment is, right? And so he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells uh, tells them that you've done bad, 
that's what you're going to get. It's equivalent. Sorry. And they're absolutely covered and smothered by absolute humiliation and abasement because the vileness of their actions shows on the Day of Judgment. Everyone sees it and they're just, you know, drenched in that vileness. So they feel absolute humiliation. And they, from Allah, the Supreme Ultimate King, who they disobeyed, who they turned away from, this absolute perfect king, they have no defender from Allah. No one to protect them in any way, shape or form. So they can't pay a ransom to get out of it. They can't fight their way out. No one will come and intercede for them to get out. They have to face this punishment and it's unbearable. ثُمَّ لَا يَمُوتُ فِيهَا وَلَا يَحْيَا And Allah says, moreover, in the hellfire, they won't die nor will they live. They won't, their existence won't come to an end, but that's not called living, it's just torment. That's what they get. They chose this knowingly and willingly. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does things with the wisdom. Wisdom we don't always know or see, but there's a tremendous wisdom. There's also the opportunity. They have their lives. It's not like they didn't have this. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them full knowledge and full understanding of what they're choosing. And the fact that the hellfire exists and this is the threat, then the reward of the believers is just so much greater. Like, you know, it's look what they've been safe, uh, saved from and what the protection, what protection they've been given from what. And then they've been given that reward. And these people chose this, right? And Allah knows best, you know, like when people, you know, I mean, we saw, um, I've, we've seen people in our time first questioning, why do people go to hell forever? And then when, you see, when they see what, you know, vile and, you know, horrible actions, you know, human beings are capable of, then, you know, many people who first question they I th think now, yeah, you know what, I'm fine with this. Right? And then turning away from your creator, eh, an insult, right? It's not just he's the supreme king, right? You know, and then, he's, you know, and all that the kufr entails, or, you know, most people when they disbelieve, there's just, there's insults hurled, you know, uh, towards believers, the messengers, the book of Allah, Allah Himself, all that is recompensed. What beautiful imagery, but what scary imagery. So He's saying that if you get pieces of a dark night, so a night uh, where there's no moon, there's, you know, the stars aren't even out, it's just absolute darkness and if you were to cut a piece of that night off where it's just pitch black and then go and cover a person's face with the absolute darkness the absence of iman the absence of good deeds all of that leads to this utter darkness and then when there's it is deep iman and there are good deeds like trust in allah gratitude to allah you know, uh, you know, accepting what Allah has decreed and putting up with difficulties with, with patience and fortitude, that's the opposite. It's full of light and Allah just makes the light, faces of the believers illumi ill illuminated and luminescent. And so he says, here it's as though pieces of the darkest night have been um, put, you know, draped over them. You know, they've been smothered with them. The entire face is dark and uh, billah, you know, it's 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 not a comment on you know skin tones. Rather, it's a comment on the nature of their souls and how vile they are. And you know, it's reflected as clear, you know, visualized uh, image. You know, like a clear visual cue for the state of their soul. And then he says, "Ulaika uh, those base, vile, low people." who had every chance to draw close at all, every chance to attain the highest of ranks and the greatest of rewards, Ashabun Nar, they're the companions of the hellfire. So they're with it forever. 
as long as the companion stays with his companion, you know, uh, that's uh, how long they're going to be there. So they're the companions of the hellfire. And so they'll be there forever, constantly tormented with no end, right? Hum fiha khalidun. And they'll be there forever and ever and ever. So Allah protect us. Honestly, we ask Allah to protect us from even going near the place, let alone being in it or like these people. A'udhu billah. So then he says, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا ثُمَّ نَقُولُ لِلَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا مَكَانَكُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَشُرَكَاؤُكُمْ فَزَيَّلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ وَقَالَ شُرَكَاؤُهُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ إِيَّانَا تَعْبُدُونَ Consider the day when we will gather them all together to say to those who associated others with Allah in worship, stay in your places, you and your associate gods. We will separate them from each other and, and their associate gods will say, it was not us that you worshipped. Right? So what happens here? nahshuruhum <clears throat> jami'an. So the word hashar is where you... Push people from out from from the outer extremes to a particular spot. So they're all resurrected. That's the bath, bath, and then Allah sends the angels to drive them all to a place which is like where modern day Syria is. That's where they're going to be, and they're driven there. That's the hashar. nahshuruhum jami'an, and recall and think about the day when we gather them all together. Now this is clearly before them going to hell and being punished in hell. Why is it mentioned before? Because Abu Saud says, you know, because of their crimes, um, it's well worth reflecting on this. That this is also a difficulty that they're going to have to face. Not just when they're punished in the fire, but here when, they have, when they're put in this situation for, for before the judgment and they're going to be exposed for turning away from God and worshipping false idols. When their idols turn away from them, the idols say, we have nothing to do with them. So on that day, وَيَوْمَ نَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا right? What happens? ثم uh, then after a long time of waiting and moreover not just that they're all gathered together after a long long wait uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ثم نقول للذين أشركوا we say to those who uh, deified others shirk is as you know a for, uh, the word referring to partnership so those who said Allah has partners in divinity Right, these people uh, well, clearly they're wrong. He doesn't have partners in divinity. He'll say to them, "Makanakum antum washurakaukum." There's a lot of discussion uh, from the grammarians around this, but it just means stick to your place, you and your partners. Right, they you know they're meant to stay there. They're not allowed to go. They're not allowed to leave. They're not allowed to do anything. They're just there with the the idols, those who they worshipped. So the idols they worshipped and their worshippers, the idolaters are all made to stay in one place. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, separates them from their idols. For Zayyalna, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So, for uh, Zayyalna bainahum, and we separate them, we make a parting between them, between uh, those who worship the idols and the idols. Here, in reality, those who worship the idols are cut off from being in contact, direct contact with the idols to show that to show that this time which you used to say our idols will intercede for us and we will do this and we will get out of the punishment. Now's the time, do something. And they can't. Right, if tabarra alladina tubiu min alladina tabau, Allah says in uh, Surah Al Baqarah, Subhanahu wa Taala, when <clears throat> those who were followed, meaning the idols, completely, or it can also mean the leaders of kufr as well, the lead, they completely disassociate themselves from those who followed them. And then they will wish, like, if only we had another chance, we would disassociate from, from these beings, right, in, in the dunya. But this is what happens. They choose, so Allah says, Allah separates them completely, right? فَزَيَّلْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ So all connections between them are severed. وَقَالَ شُرَكَاؤُهُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ إِيَّانَا تَعْبُدُونَ So their 
idols and whoever they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disassociate themselves. They would say, they will say, you certainly were not worshipping us. Us, you know, you weren't worshipping us. Iyana is actually come before, like like in Iyaka and Abudu, you we worship. The same effect is here. And he says, it was not us that you worshipped. So what are they doing? They, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've been given life now. And they're speaking, and they're speaking the truth. They're saying, no, you weren't worshipping us. We didn't want you to worship us. We never claimed worshippers. So in reality, what were they worshipping? Nothing. Something that doesn't even exist. The idols didn't uh, sanction this worship. So these people are just stuck there now. They had their claims in the dunya. In the dunya this idol will... Uh, um, uh, intercede for me that idol will do this and now when the moment comes they're completely severed all ties are severed and the idols reject them as well you weren't worshipping us what were they worshipping? absolute nothing just wasting their time that's what will happen ma kuntum iyana ta'budun it wasn't us who you, that you were worshipping so what does this do? it it actually just causes immense regret and remorse, it's unbelievable because the stakes are high on that day. They're seeing the hellfire and they know people are going to get thrown in there and punished. The stakes are high when they see the idols being recreated and like, oh, maybe yes, they'll do something. And then when they're told, stay, what's going to happen? Oh no, and then they're separated. And then the idols say, you weren't worshipping us. We've got nothing to do with you. So then imagine the remorse and the regret and the panic and the worry and the anxiety and oh my God, what's going to happen? Are we going to get punished? All that going through them. This, they willingly chose because it was all clear here in the verses. They heard the verses and they thought, I don't care. And then when they actually live through it, it's going to be the worst experience of their existence up until that point because there's worse to come after that. <coughs> So then he says that he quotes. He says that the the idols will say, "Kafa billahi shahid and bainana wa bainakum." Allah, it's so this word kafa. Okay, Allah is sufficient as a witness between each of us uh, that we were totally aware of your worship. Allah is sufficient as a uh, witness between us, and you can say this is a separate statement. In kunna ab, we were absolutely unaware of your worship. So in and the lam on la ghafilin together highly emphasized. Uh, statement and kunna we absolutely were ghafilin from ghafla like where you're just completely unaware of the existence of something or you're unaware of the occurrence of something they had no idea so he says so this term kafa is used to express wonder in some situations shock and you know but here he's saying that Allah, it's, it's amazing. Like, you know, you really want so a witness. Here, Allah is enough as a witness. And how amazing He is as a witness. Allah is more than enough. He's the Supreme King. He is enough as a witness between us and you. You know, in order to, for us to establish that you were worshipping us. We did not sanction this. We did not ask you to do this. You made the lies up. <coughs> Uh, or you just heard people talking these lies about worship this tree, worship this thing, worship this lifeless ob inanimate object. It will do this, it represents this, being and all of that was fake. And you made it up. In kunna an ibadatikum la ghafilin. We were absolutely unaware, heedless. It's like right now, wherever you're sat, what's happening on, you know, Ganymede, the planet, the moon of Jupiter? What's happening on the Northern Hemisphere? No idea. Complete ghafla. And so he's saying, we were completely, <clears throat> completely heedless about this matter. They made it up. They have to pay the price. And this is it. You know, where their own idols turn away from them and say, look, we've got nothing to do with this. What are they going to do? It's the start of the worst moments of their existence. Imagine that shock. Imagine that pain, imagine that suffering and it's not like they're being forced into uh, into experiencing those things 
uh, without a choice. They have a choice. They have a choice in the dunya. And those who have gone from them, they've made their decision. But those who are around and those who will continue to be here, this is your choice. You have to stand and face God on that day. And there's no sanction. There's no proof for it. But not after the, the, the light and guidance of this Quran. Look at it. Look how it moves people. And the truth and the wisdom that just shines through. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as absolute clarity and a criterion for right and wrong. So they were heedless of those their, their worshippers. They didn't ask for it. So the worshippers have to bear the brunt of their wrong actions. It's not like the idols came and idols came and threatened to punish them if they didn't worship them. None of that. Allah protect us honestly. So let's turn, let's stop here and we'll continue from this point insha'Allah. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.